Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Movie Trivia Schmodown. Alongside Andrew Guy, I am Mark Ellis for a very special exhibition match. Andrew, this vid is sponsored by our friends at Lionsgate because the Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard is already available on digital and comes on to 4K, Blu-ray, and DVD August 17th. And that is going to be the theme of today's match. You get a lot of Ryan Reynolds, a lot of Salma Hayek, a lot of Samuel L. Jackson, some explosive action, some laughs is going to ensue, I'm sure with these two competitors but before we tease the match any further tell the folks at home about the hitman's wife's bodyguard i'm so glad you asked ellis i got a chance to watch this yesterday courtesy once again of lionsgate so i'm gonna give you guys a little breakdown of what this movie is all about without spoiling too much the world's most lethal odd couple bodyguard michael bryce and hitman darius kincaid are back on another life-threatening mission Still unlicensed and under scrutiny, Bryce is forced into action by Darius's even more volatile wife, the infamous international con artist Sonia Kincaid. As Bryce is driven over the edge by his two most dangerous protectees, the trio get in over their heads in a global plot and soon find that they are all that stand between Europe and a vengeful and powerful madman played by the one and only Antonio Banderas. Joining in on the fun and the mayhem is also Morgan Freeman. You're going to have to find out just exactly how he fits into this action-packed comedy. Ellis, it was a blast. What was your favorite line of Selma Hayek? Say it right now. I'm kidding. Selma Hayek is one that. of those people that, like, when Christian and I talked about the Hitman's Bodyguard, the 2017 film, we loved it, and she stole a lot of the movie and I actually had the pleasure of seeing this opening weekend in theaters and it's what you said because you add in Frank Grillo and Antonio Banderas and Morgan Freeman to a great cast already it just takes everything that we loved about the 2017 film up another notch and because it is sort of like a action comedy buddy movie film sort of frenemy movie it reminds me of how you and I got together on the announcing desk it's like a, a much you know more heightened version of Andrew Guy and Mark Ellis announcing a trivia match that's a nice way to talk about the movie I'd say right I think so I mean we almost died four times I think throughout training but that was pretty good for us and honestly they see a lot more of that in the film than you and I did so uh yeah I think it's a pretty good way to say that you and I have uh, locked this down as a duo by just surviving through the training it's going to be a fun one here today once again the hitman's wife's bodyguard available on August 17th on 4k blu-ray and dvd or you can pick up your digital copy right now the link is in the description of this vid and so when we talk about the competitors today you have william the beast bibiani and chance the cobra ellison two a-listers who are never shy about competing in any sort of match and pre-show they seemed really frothing at the mouth for this match in particular what is it about the hitman's bodyguard franchise the actors actresses involved that you think gets chance and gets William up out of bed in the morning. I think it's the chemistry. It's all about the chemistry, Ellis. You talk about Bryce and Kincaid. That's what we're going to see today between Bibbs and Ellison. You know, they've both been in the league for a very long time. They're both set in their own ways, but today they must be paired up going head to head. So maybe we'll see a little bit of smack talk going on. We know that Darius loves to talk his trash to Bryce. Maybe Bibbs or Ellison will pick up on that, but it's going to be all about the chemistry today, my friend. It's going to be a fun one. And once again, every question from every category in today's three round match is somehow related to the Hitman's Wife's bodyguard. Thank you to our friends at Lionsgate for sponsoring this vid. Andrew, if you're ready to go, then I'd say let's get on with the introductions and let's meet the Beast and the Cobra. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia showdown. Three rounds about the Hitman's Bodyguard franchise. Introducing first, representing the Quirky Mercs with the record of 12 hits, 10 failed missions, and 4 kills, William the Beast! I just want to say those were not failed missions. They were learning experiences. They were training exercises. It, it, it's, it's all it's all on the positive. It's all on the positive. You survived with your ego intact. I'm going to ask you and your competitor each a similar question about the 
the back history of one of the actors that stars in The Hitman's Wife Bodyguard. So for you, I'll take Samuel L. Jackson, William. When was the first time Samuel L. Jackson came on your radar as this guy is an actor of note? I believe it was uh, his small but noteworthy appearance in the Alan Alda film Betsy's Wedding. Uh, you may recall that uh, there's a part in the film where Alan Alda and uh, 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 Joe Pesci, uh, and uh, they're, they're, they're being attacked uh, by other mafiosos, and uh, <laughs> wouldn't you know it, they need to go to a chop shop. And who's at that chop shop? Samuel L. Jackson. It's one scene, it's a memorable scene, and then, of course, he went on to even bigger and better things. You know, Bibbs, I have to ask you because Antonio Banderas has been one of my absolute favorite action stars ever since I was a kid. I was a big, big fan of Desperado. Are you thinking that this is Antonio's return to being a great action star in the 2020s? I don't think he ever left. I think uh, once a great action star, always a great action star. And uh, the more Banderas, the better. I would agree with that. And the oh, more yeah. Puss in Boots, the better as well. Just put, yeah, the, the little cat with his little boots, and he's got the little he's got, he's got boots. He's got boots. No one can pretend he ain't got boots. Oh, he's got boots. All right. Boots. We'll, we'll, we'll let you growl in peace for a little bit before growl, we start growl. the match, and we'll he's meet your competitor. He's got boots. And his opponent, representing Corruption. With a record of five completed hits, four failed missions, and two kills, the Cobra Kings, Ellison. At the record show, my number for completed missions about to go all the way up. So, do that. <laughs> completing the mission. So I asked uh, the Beast about his first experience with Samuel L. Jackson. I'm going to ask you, Chance, about your first time meeting Ryan Reynolds. Maybe not in person, but on the big screen or the small screen. Yes, I'm hoping you're going to say two guys are going to go to a pizza place. Uh, no, actually. But I do actually remember the first time I took notice of Ryan Reynolds. It was 2009. Well, you know, we, we lacked Chance Ellison went to go see X-Men Origins Wolverine. Before that movie, a trailer for The Proposal played, to which I'm like, okay, who's, 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 the, who's this, you know, strapping lad with the, with the good jawline? And the movie starts, and then he's in the movie. I lean over my, my mom and was like, oh my god, it's the guy! We just saw him in The Proposal! And, then, and never, ever since then, I've never not recognized Ryan Reynolds for the true talent that he is. Credit to Canada. You know, Cobra, I'm a big, big fan of Ryan Reynolds. Coming into this, I was most excited to see him, but it did feel like Selma Hayek stole the show once again. Do you have a favorite scene-stealing performance from someone that might not be a lead? I know that's putting you on the spot, but uh, I got to ask. From, from any movie? Any movie. Ooh, that's a, that's a lot of... Uh, wow, a lot he opened up <laughs> film lore on Chance. Yeah, uh, but a scene stealer. If I had to go somewhere, with, you know, not a lot of screen time. The kind of something the first. Not a lot of screen time made the impact. Uh, first one comes to mind is of course Alec Baldwin and Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Dude's in it for one scene, but he owns that entire movie. It's probably my favorite performance of his entire career. It's literally like six minutes. But every every time I think of that movie, my first thought is coffee is for closers, and yeah, he's incredible in that movie. All right, so someone is getting coffee at the end of this match, <laughs> oh, yeah. but it will be. The winner, Chance the Cobra Ellison versus William the Beast Bibiani. Let's get our competitors ready to go. Oh, how you doing? Boy. Chance, yeah. do you, would you like to say hi to the Beast? No, I would not. I'd like to play. I'd like to win. Okay. Cold you know, when Chance, blooded. when Chance told me he wanted a rematch and he wanted it to be about his favorite movie franchise, I oh, said, yeah. bring it. And so here we are. And let's uh, let's let's all uh, let's all do our best. Let's make it a hit. <laughs> Uh, Andrew, this is why I love these two guys. It's, it, it's an exhibition match, but it, it already does not feel like that until we get to the reading of the rules of round number one, because this round number one, like we said, all categories based around the hitman's wife's bodyguard. Six questions will emerge from six different corners of the bodyguard franchise about the hitman or the hitman's wife. In round number one, each question is worth a point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing. At least there isn't in round number one. We ask the question. You write down your best attempt at an answer. Once Andrew or myself ask you by name or nickname to reveal your answer, please show what you wrote to your camera. Same time you verbalize your attempt into the microphone. We'll give you three JTE rules. We'll give you a challenge. What the heck? Why not? 
for the duration of this match. JT rules is your repeat. Your challenge is if you don't like the way a question was ruled. We start with William the Beast Bibiani. William, are you locked and loaded, ready to go? Always be assassinating. <laughs> and Chance the Cobra Ellison, you ready to get going? Let's get it, mother... I'm not going to finish it. Okay. Thank you. The okay. TV edit. It's the TV edit. Mr. Falcon. And <laughs> let's get ready to Schmodown. All right, gentlemen, six questions coming your way from the Hitman's bodyguard or the Hitman's wife's bodyguard. Starting with question number one in the category of the Hitman's bodyguard. That makes sense. Who directed the Hitman's bodyguard? All right, we uh, officially kicked off the match, and a special shout out to all of our patrons out there watching this match exclusively for you. We appreciate everything that you do for the show. Five, five, four, three, two. You had to know this question was coming. We start with the Cobra. Uh, it's Patrick Hughes. He's one for one. How about the Beast? Did you know he's John Hughes's son, Patrick Hughes? Is he really? No. He really? <laughs> if you knew that, you would be wrong. Is he, is he the long lost Hughes brother? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Somebody is going to freeze my voice and, and my, my look right when I believed that. I was like, <laughs> I've embarrassed myself. I've embarrassed myself. Your next question is in the world of that guy that Chance first met in 2009 on the big screen, Ryan Reynolds. And the question is, in what European country do we see Ryan's Michael character taking a vacation to get away from bodyguarding at the beginning of the hitman's wife's bodyguard? You know what I thought was so fascinating about this, Ellis, was that there's so much beautiful scenery that is always so stressful in this movie. I'm like, I want to go there, just not right then. Four, three, yeah, they really take the vacation out of the destination part. Pens <laughs> down, and let's go to the beast first. Is it Italy? It is Italy. That is correct. A chance to have it. Love the country, Italy. He's got it as well. We're tied at two. There's so many yeah, countries in that continent. Our first two, and now going to another very famous actor for your third question, Samuel L. Jackson, mother. No, never mind. Sorry, we'll hold <laughs> that. Uh, here we go. Question number three. Darius buys what type of flowers for Sonia that he wants to deliver to her in Amsterdam in the Hitman's Bodyguard? most um exotic vacation destination andrew guy has ever traveled to is uh i'd say tokyo probably is the most exotic place i didn't you get credit for that a lot but i loved it there two one pens down let's go to you chance the only flower i accept tulips that's duly noted for your next birthday how about william uh it's tulips not irises it is tulips <laughs> <laughs> that is a very clever answer for a point. Your next question is in the category of the hitman's wife's bodyguard, and it is, who plays the villainous Aristotle Papadopoulos, a shipping tycoon in the hitman's wife's bodyguard? It would Could, be of your benefit if you listen to Andrew Guy. Couldn't they have come up with a name that sounded Greek? I'm pretty sure that's Aristotle, Greek. Aristotle's that's pretty not, Greek, uh, according yeah. to, you know, history. Four, three, two, one. Pens down, and we go to William. Antonio Banderas. He oh is God. perfect through four. How about chance? The very Greek Antonio Banderas. There it is. Twelve <laughs> percent. It's, not, it's something. <laughs> All right, here we go for your fifth question. Coming from the category of Hitman's franchise movie quotes. Which actor said the line, you're bad? You don't even understand how 21st century technology works. I mean, how have you stayed alive this long? You, know, you, wanted, you wanted the actor, right? Yes. If, okay. if being alive was relying on being able to operate 21st technology, 21st century technology, I think we'd both be out. I'd struggle with 20th century technology, fine. I can't even say Four. 21st century. Three, <laughs> two. One, yeah, I don't know why the 20th century was the 1900. Pens down, let's go to you, Chance. This is the actor I first met in 2009, Ryan Reynolds. There you go, William for the tie. I look forward to the Zoetrope trivia showdown. Uh, it's the Ryan Reynolds. One day we'll get there in the meantime. 
Two perfect rounds thus far through five. Again, it's a six question round one. And so this next query will be for a perfect round for both you gentlemen. And it takes place in the category of Hitman's Bodyguard Character. And the question for a point, who plays Michael Bryce Sr., Michael's stepfather, in the Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard? All right, Els, who are you taking a bullet for? Of the people on screen right now? Sure. Your Better. son? Well, Chance's last name is Ellis' son, so it's kind of hard to not say. Wow. Bibs, we're just wow. taking that shot straight up. Three. I'm sorry, William. <laughs> I, what can I say? I deserve it. Well, I deserve it for not related to this handsome man. Uh, Beast. Uh, he's a Morgan Freeman. He has a perfect round one. How about my son, who I took a bullet for? Thank you. Thank you, Dad. Buttery boss got himself, Morgan Freeman. That's why I don't take you fishing. I already did enough for you. That is correct. For a point, they're both perfect, Andrew, so they get a bonus question in round one. While Ellis performs some emergency surgery for that bullet he just take, took, take, took, I will be asking your question here, your seventh question, your bonus question. Who plays Vladislav Dukovic, the former dictatorial president of Belarus in the Hitman's Bodyguard? Um, we're much better pronouncing these names than we are Star Wars characters. I'd like to point that out for the record. Yes, I, I'm glad that you said that, because I didn't want to call attention to the fact that I just nailed that pronunciation. Five, four is pretty good. Three, two, one. Pens down. Let's go to your first chance for a super perfect round. Maybe like the 12th Russian characters I've ever played, Gary Oldman. Nailed it, and William. Uh, Mr. Gary Oldman. These guys love competition, and they have proven it with a perfect round. It is seven to seven at the end of round one of this Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard exhibition match as we cruise into number two. And the rules of said round are, it's the wheel round, the wheel of fate, doom, and a lot of Hitman and a lot of bodyguard and some wives on there as well. You'll spin that wheel once you settle on a category. Three questions will emerge for each competitor. Questions worth two points, unless you need the aid of multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question proceeds to one. Keep in mind, competitors, stealing is available in round number two. So, Chance, the luxury is yours by way of tiebreaker. Do you want to spin that wheel first or defer to your opponent? I'll, I'll go first. All right, Chance is spinning first, and William is aghast. I what? <laughs> and there's the wheel. Chance going to give that one a spin. All sorts of categories from the world of the Hitman's Bodyguard franchise. So many awesome names on that wheel from this franchise. <laughs> it really is pretty impressive. And wouldn't you know it, he spun the Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. Chance, you do have the option of spinning again, or you can keep that as your category. I'll keep it. He's keeping it, the Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard, which, by the way, available on 4K, Blu-ray, and DVD, August 17th, available on digital now. And now, Andrew is going to ask Chance some questions about said movie, three in total. Andrew, at your ready, sir. And here we are, the Cobra in the category of the Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. Three questions coming your way. The film's dream sequence that opens the film is in what European city? Mm. That's a good question. <laughs> uh, I'll take credit. Multiple choice. All right, okay. he's going to check it down to multiple choice for one point. Your options are A, Manchester, B, Oxford, C, Liverpool, or D, London. London. That's correct for one point. Okay. Able to use your multiple choice to get there. Still technically perfect as we get to the second question in the category of the Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. Michael sees a former client played by what actor while undercover with Sonya who blows their cover? That is the excellent Richard E. Grant. Yay. Blown up your spot. Absolutely it is the great Richard E. Grant for two more points. Cobra, your final question in the category of the Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. What song by Tina Turner can be heard briefly playing during the car chase getaway from the art gallery? The best. You simply the best. 
I was waiting for someone to do it. Give him two more points. He hits all three questions. But Ellis, there was one check down early on. We'll see if the beast can kill him over it or capitalize on it. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to get into the mode here. No, you're excited. And with Tina Turner as a soundtrack, who wouldn't be? So Chance, a great round two. And like Andrew Guy noted, he's still perfect thus far. Let's see if William Bibiani can be perfecter with his spin. Yeah. There you go. Perfect time. Good. You can spin this wheel harder than the virtual, than the actual wheel at this point. Oh, he oh, spun no! opponent's oh! choice. Let's get Chance into the fray. Oh, anything could happen. <laughs> it's like going into a mission with no debriefing. Cobra, what All right. would you like to give your opponent hmm. spinning opponent's choice? Uh, Let's go with Hmm, this is tough, actually. I'm gonna go with quotes. Quotes. Okay. Quotes is the selection. All right, William, I'll be asking you your quotes. And here we go. Question number one for two points, and to cut that lead of chances from five to three. We need to know which character in the films says family makes a man whole. Uh, that would be uh, former Belarusian President Dukovic. That is correct for two points. And William's fandom and knowledge paying off thus far in round two. We go to your next question. And it is. In The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard, Michael asks for a sign. He then sees a sign, a bus, and an airplane that all tell him to go where? Tuscany. That is correct for two more points. And now William Bibiani, the beast, set to take the lead over Chance of Cobra Ellison if he can get this last question in the category of the Hitman franchise movie quotes. Here it is. Which actor said, you know, Dukovic's men have killed every single witness brought against them, and my security detail is a dozen off-duty cops? Looking for the character or the actor? Actor. Uh, Samuel L. Jackson. I have a feeling you would have gotten it either way. That is correct for two more points. And just like that, Andrew, it's a even more perfect William Bibiotti. Nobody's missed a question yet, but... Bibiani never checking to multiple choice gives him a one point lead going into round three. It's 13 to 12. Yeah, when you're playing at this level, Ellis, that one check down might be the difference between a completed mission and a coffin. We'll Guys, find don't rub it in. Don't Ellis rub it in, okay? He feels bad <laughs> enough, all right? <laughs> a completed mission in a coffin. Not a whole lot of wiggle room there either. <laughs> <laughs> this is right. Hitman's bodyguard territory, Ellis. Come on. Okay, alongside Andrew, no middle ground guy, I am Mark Ellis, <laughs> and uh, round number three works like thus. It's a normal round number three, except according to my partner, the stakes are a lot higher. You get three questions from three different categories of Hitman's Bodyguard franchise categories. You may select numbers one through eight. We do need three numbers within that range from each of you. They may not be the same normals as your opponent. First question is worth two points. Next one is worth three points. Final question is worth five points. No penalty for missing a question. And there is no stealing in round three. And so, William Bibiani, you have the luxury of giving us your three lucky numbers first from one to eight. What feels fortunate? I'm going to go with two, three, and five. Yes, sir. And chance. Eight, nine, ten. Uh, we can do eight. We cannot do nine or ten. Oh, wait, I'm, I'm sorry. What, what was the range again? I'm sorry. Uh, just one to eight. My bad, my bad, my bad. Uh, six, seven, eight. Six, seven, eight. There we go. We can do all three of those numbers. We have them in stock. And so it is going to be Chance fielding questions from Andrew Guy. I'll be administering the questions to William Bibiani. Chance, you selected category six for your two-pointer, which could give you a lead back on top of Bibbs. Andrew, what's he looking at? For the number six, we're going to go to the category of the lovely Selma Hayek for your two-point question, Cobra. Sonia tells Michael that she and Darius are trying to have what? To which Michael replies, may God have mercy on our souls. A child. 
Looking for a baby, a child, it all works. Two points to the Cobra, and we go back over to the Beast. Would have accepted Offspring as well. I that like, is correct. I like, I like to Not think bad. that it's a it's a Mandalorian crossover. They're looking for Grogu. <laughs> <laughs> There's. Okay. William, your question for two points and to regain the lead over the Cobra. You selected number two, and for two points, that corresponds to the 2017 hit film, The Hitman's Bodyguard. That makes sense. And the question. Under what type of car does Michael plant C4, causing an explosion to 27 St. George Street? I believe it's a Rolls Royce. Your belief has been ratified into law. That is correct yeah. for a very tough two-point question that Bibiani got. A periwinkle Rolls Royce. Well, now you're just <laughs> rubbing it in. I don't even know yeah. what color periwinkle is, but I bet it's on my person somewhere I with this luxurious suit. Somewhere right around. Uh, we'll, we'll leave that. Chance, you chose number seven for your three-point question. You said periwinkle, Andrew, not periwrinkles. <laughs> And for your three-point question, we are going to the category of scores and soundtracks. Okay. Cobra, three points. Mm -hmm. While fighting on the boat with Magnuson in Hitman's wife's bodyguard, Michael smashes his enemy's head into a jukebox, causing what Rebecca Black song to play? Hmm. It's not Sunday. It's not Saturday. It's not Monday or Thursday or Tuesday. Huh? Either Wednesday, Wednesday or Friday. Yeah. I'm going Friday. She was, she was prolific. She was prolific. <laughs> he somehow navigates through six <laughs> other options, Ellis, to get us to Friday for three points. We're going back over to the beach. Uh, I love being able to look inside the mind of this incredible former two teams champion. It's like, my God, just... Just seeing the gears turn, wow. Right. The way that he Dating sounds out hints and arrives at the correct day. He had a one in seven shot and he gets it. He has the lead, but the beast can reclaim it once again. Was his three point question, he selected category three and that corresponds to the Hitman's bodyguard quotes, a category you're pretty familiar with, William. All right, more quotes, let's do it. All right, and the question. In the Hitman's Bodyguard, this actor says, I can protect someone from bullets and explosives, but there's nothing I can do against indiscriminate use of mayonnaise for 68 straight years. Unforgivable. Again, first off, that is some serious mayonnaise slander. Secondly, <laughs> uh, did you want, again, did you want the character or the actor? I missed Actor, that. please. Actor, Ryan Reynolds. It is some mayo slander, which I subscribe to, and... I'm also a big fan of Ryan Reynolds. That is correct for three points. Andrew, it has been a seesaw battle back and forth. Bibbs back on top, forcing Chance to hit a five-pointer he's got to have. Yeah, the five-pointer, the great equalizer. Here we go, Chance. You chose number eight for your five-point question, which is going to get us to the category of the Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. Okay. Quotes. Okay. For five points. Michael says he's thinking about joining his dad's agency, which would go by what name if he joined? Hmm. Damn. Five, four. Repeat the question. Three. That's his first JTE rule. The question here, and just to remind everyone of the stakes, a chance misses this. It will get the kill. <laughs> Gotta operate under pressure here, Cobra. Really? <laughs> five points. Stop laughing for five Sorry. points. Sorry. The category. The hitman's wife's bodyguard Tommy. quotes. Michael says he's thinking about joining his dad's agency, which would go by what name if he joined? Bryson's son? That is correct for five wow. big points a JTE used flawlessly. We're going back over to William Bibiani. Uh, I'm looking it up. Bryson sung apparently also a Rebecca Black tune, and so Chance really knows his stuff. <laughs> All right. He forces the hand of William the Beast Bibiani, a legend etched into mythology in the movie Trivia Schmodown, but now he faces a daunting task. 
hitting a five pointer or whatever fate Andrew says is going to befall him. So before we get going, can I can I use cinemathology? I quite like that. <laughs> you certainly. Can. That's a new word, and I love wow. it. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> well played, sir. Five points is what's at stake, as is the map. And William, you selected number five conveniently for us. Yep. For the win. Your question is in the category of the hitman's wife's bodyguard, the film. Makes sense. And it is. Michael's stepfather let him borrow what kind of car that Michael wasn't even allowed to look at as a kid? Jaguar. And your winner! William the Beast Viviani gets it. And so right now we're going to have an exclusive post-match interview with the winner. All right, there is William, the winner of the match today. William, you apparently not only know a lot about movies, and particularly the Hitman's Bodyguard franchise, but also cars. You got Rolls Royce and Jaguar in there. Was there a car when you were a little kid that you said, one day I'm going to get me one of those and veer around Tuscany or London or any other vacation destination? Actually, yes. It was the Corvette from the short-lived TV series. They came from outer space. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that specific, Andrew. Yep. yep. Dean Cameron drove around uh, yep. America. He was an alien. Came to Earth. Yeah. Wanted oh, to yeah. wanted to party. Uh, didn't want to go to Cambridge. Was supposed to go to Cambridge. Instead, driving around in this beautiful cherry red Corvette with that one little, that one little white like swoosh part. I don't know what you call it, but it looked real, real nice. I've never been in one. Always wanted to drive one. Maybe someday I'll learn to drive a stick. So, Bibbs, I have to ask you now that the match is out of the way, the fun is out of the way, we have to get down to brass tacks. What is the oh. tactic of taking out Ellison's bodyguard? May I suggest, uh, for people who are playing Chance Ellison and uh, want to win, uh, I recommend uh, going perfect and hoping he doesn't, or at least checks down to multiple choice. For me, I think that's the best strategy uh, one could hope for. Just don't miss any questions, and then uh, hope that he doesn't, or hope that he does, and then you, and then you, and then and then you win. I'm going to chalk that up as outsmart his bodyguard, Ellis. Sure. I don't hate that answer. Th yeah. This next one, William, we'll close up shop here, Let's and go. I'm going to be putting you on the spot a little bit, but I think you're up to the task. So, the Hitman's Bodyguard and the Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard, both very popular movies. There is some assumption that maybe we could get another one in this beloved franchise if so what would william bibiani title the third installment of this franchise Ooh. the hitman's wife's bodyguards orthodontist there you have it folks that is a true fan of the hitman's bodyguard franchise and the winner of today's match william the beast bibiani william it's just another great exhibition match performance another great schmodown performance thank you for once again gracing us with your presence and being one of the best this game has ever seen Round, round. What a match, Ellis. That's exactly what you expect when you have two stars of the movie Trivia Showdown going head to head. It's a whole lot of fun watching Chance and William, the Cobra and the Beast, two legends of the Showdown, having some fun all with the Hitman's Bodyguard franchise. And a special thanks to all of our patrons who support the show day in and day out, and that's why they get to enjoy special matches like this one. We hope you were entertained a little bit. I know I was, Andrew, and regardless of what the stakes may or may not have been for the winner and the loser, this was just a really fun match to call, and huge props to all of our writers who came up with these questions. Yeah, absolutely incredible questions. I literally watched both these movies yesterday, and I think I still would have been batting about 75% or so. So I think it's pretty safe to say that you and I are doing well up here at the announcer's desk behind our bulletproof class. I had Rolls Royce, I had Jaguar, and anything not about the automotive industry, I was pretty out on. So once again, congrats to the beast felling the Cobra, playing the role of Ricky Ticky Tabby here today. Friendly reminder to everybody out there, the Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard is available right now on digital. As a matter of fact, the link is in the description of this vid. Just click on that and enjoy the movie. You can also pick up the 4K, Blu-ray, and DVD when they drop August 17th. And thanks again to our friends at Lionsgate for sponsoring this vid. Andrew Guy, you took this match very seriously, and I appreciate you for it. Why don't you take us out here today? 
All right, to all of you wonderful fans of the Movie Trivia Schmodown, and of course, Lionsgate, thank you so very much for being here today. For Christian Harloff, Skybound, Mark Ellis, and myself, keep on studying, keep on answering those questions, and we'll see you next time in the Movie Trivia Schmodown.